Coach, so you're relaxed today? Yes, blood. I had a good day. I enjoyed it and I'd swim at the health club and the great meal your wife cooked. Now I'm reading my New York Times. How do you get New York Times in California? Where do you find it? Uh, I accidentally found it at Starbucks. So I go to Starbucks every morning and I pick up the New York Times. I uh, read it at home all the time. Uh huh. What did you think of uh, Getty Villa? Oh, the Getty Villa was absolutely tremendous. I, I have never been any place like that. And I, the woman who took us around for 45 minutes, she must have had two doctor's degrees in anthropology and ethnography because she knew everything. And uh, it was absolutely delightful listening to her. And it was nice to be able to ask her a question and she didn't know. Mm -hmm. I had to throw that in because uh, I took uh, Greek and Latin history when I was younger and I said, uh, what famous man, well, I'll give you the name of the man, the name of the man was Cato and every time he would talk to the Roman Emperor, Empire in the Senate, he had a phrase and his phrase was Carthago delenda est, which translate into uh, Carthage must be destroyed, which probably should be done by someone in the United States Senate getting up and saying, we must destroy lobbyists or we will never be a real government. And then go on and talk about what you want to talk about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting. Did you find it amazing how they recreated the architecture? Oh, the, well, uh, I, I mean, uh, the sea, you know, it's like going out to the, uh, from uh, Italy out to the sea, either on the Adriatic side or the other side, and uh, the walkways and uh, the road going up there uh, was like a, uh, a Roman road, uh, like they laid roads years ago, and uh, the, the walls they built and the significance of them, and of course, the whole thing was about Greece and Rome and, and the Etruscans, and uh, uh, it was a great period. Unfortunately, uh, they don't uh, teach that much anymore. But I've never been at a, a museum like that with the artifacts that they have from uh, down there near Naples and Athenaeum and Herculeum and uh, Mount Vesuvius. Uh, it was fantastic. Do you think America can be called an empire? Well, we've been in an empire over 200 years now, from 1776, 18, 19. Uh, most empires don't last more than 200 years. And uh, the question is, uh, with the rising of the Indians and the rising of the Chinese in Asia, and the way they're progressing and their gross national products are growing, and of course they're using up all all the things we use, copper, lead, and uh, steel the, to build cars. They all want cars like we are, and all we're doing is contributing more to the uh, uh, problems we have with CO2 and, and the environment. Do you think uh, American Empire can s survive and live as long as Roman Empire did? Well, you know, corruption usually can do away with an empire. And uh, my personal opinion is that uh, lobbyists, K Street, they're all corruptors. They're in there for oil and gas. They're in there for all the industries uh, making electricity. What are they using? They're using coal. They don't want to use uh, nuclear power because they're worried about the residue. Uh, all they're really worried about under capitalism is making money. Uh, the consequences for the people in losing jobs and in a bad environment and uh, wrecking the uh, North Pole and probably the South Pole with the environmental things that we do with oil and such, the fossil fuels, uh, I, I think they have to get rid of lobbyists and uh, let the government uh, do research and find out what's best for the people. Uh, the old adage was, is, uh, is government for the good, uh, 
good of the people or is government there, how do they put it, uh, are the people there to serve government? Uh, they used to say that about the Republican and the Democratic parties, that the Democratic parties work to take care of the people and the government work to take care of the country, but a lot of times neither one of the parties do well. Coach, is the world safer place to live now or when you were in your 20s or 30s? Well, I lived in New York City for my first 18 years in a section called Brooklyn. We could go up to Manhattan at night and we could go up to 52nd Street and 52nd Street was where all the jazz and modern music was played at all the clubs and we never worried about getting on a subway or coming home two or three in the morning. Uh, we would go out at, we'd eat dinner late because our parents came home from work late and we'd go out 9.30 or 10 and it was nothing to be out till one or two in the morning and get up for school in the morning. Uh, it's a, it was a, a lot, a great deal more safe than it is today. That's locally. How about globally, coach? Well, globally, uh, things are in a mess, as we know. Uh, you have a lot of nationalistic movements. Uh, probably the most important one in terms of uh, the United States is the uh, nationalism of the Pal Palestinians who want the right to return to Israel and of course Israel's not going to give that up and that sort of uh, sets the tone because you've got the United States and Israel against Muslim nations and many of the Muslim nations resent the materialism and the wealth and how we get that wealth taking oil from Muslim nations. So uh, there's going to be problems. I mean, uh, you look to Kazakhstan, you look to Afghanistan, you look to Russia, and everything that's going on, uh, you can almost tie to oil. I mean, uh, last year, I, I, I think Exxon made about $40 billion. Why don't we build more refineries? If we had more refineries, you'd get more oil. And with that happening, you'd have cheaper oil prices. But, you know, Bush and his father, big buddies with the Saudi Arabians. Uh, if you can remember back to uh, Reza Shah Pahlavi, our government was pals with them and put him in power. And of course, that alienated all the Iranian people. And uh, he uh, had millions, I mean millions, billions of dollars, and uh, they were forced, they were forced to leave the country when Reza Shah Pahlavi was taken out of the country. They, the people didn't want him any longer. So you have that problem in Kazakhstan with the government. Uh, is Putin really just a, a politician or is he on the verge of becoming an emperor? Uh, I taught history and I look at history and they say if you don't study history, you're doomed to repeat it. Uh, someone by the name of Santiana said that years ago and it's in every history book, but it seems we don't look at the past, but uh, governments are, aren't like people, you know, you can go to Europe as an American and many places and people love you as people. but. Government creates situations where there are places that are unsafe to go. I mean, uh, they put it right in the State Department. Uh, perhaps I don't know, I'm taking a stab, but one time, don't go to Greece. It was unsafe. Don't go to Lebanon. It was unsafe. Don't go to Egypt because you have extreme extremists, jihadists, uh, the Al-Qaeda. Uh, all of them are there and ready to do harm to Americans and take lives and use their terror to change our life. And unfortunately, uh, our lives have changed now. Coach, how was your swim today? Well, I grew up swimming in Coney Island. I used to be able to swim a mile out to the Bellboy where the boats went by. Uh, let's say I, I might have done 300 yards today. and. 
I'm uh, somewhat tired from it, but it gave me a good appetite for supper. Great. Okay, Coach, so we're going to go have a good night and we'll continue tomorrow. Good night. I'll see you tomorrow.